You know when you really like something and you really don't want to break it? And then you break it? Mm, that's exactly what I did. I had so much planned for this new machine and then I broke it. It's not broke like I didn't break it like it's ruined. And don't worry, it's completely my fault, not Elegoose. And uh, before I tell you how I broke it and show you what I printed, uh, let's take a full look at the machine, to be fair. Also, stick around for the price and who I think this machine is ultimately for. And uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's get it up here on the bench. You are looking at the brand new, super fast Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra. Now let's get straight into the features. We'll give it a little bit of a spin and uh, go around the outside first. So let's start with the dimensions of the machine. So it's a pretty big machine. Um, it's about 14 inches wide, about 13 inches deep, and a little shy of 22 inches tall. And that 14 inches wide I talked about, that does include the little antenna here on the side. And it's heavy, like really heavy, like 33 pounds heavy. Right here on the front right side, you have a four inch capacitive color touch screen um, that's actually super responsive. Um, it's bright, it's vibrant, and uh, well, it's actually kind of nice to use. Next, it has a flip up lid, which is better than the big square removable lids uh, of the past and on other machines. Um, I kind of like this one. Instead of the orange ones and the red ones and the green ones that we're all kind of used to, it has kind of a classy, smoky uh, kind of appearance. I like it. Uh, there aren't any handles. So if you wanna open it, you kinda of gotta squeeze it from the sides and pick up, um, or you gotta dig a finger kind of, kind of back in here into the corner. Um, not that big of a deal. Now on the right side here, you have a Wi-Fi antenna, a single USB type A, you have the power switch, and you have a DC power connector that goes to your brick and then into the wall. Around the back, there is a three inch ventilation access port that's accessible from the inside, which would be used if you wanted to uh, vent this to the outside or run some type of additional filter on it. Continuing on around to the left side, you have this pretty awesome little machined out port. Um, it, it's kind of a nice aesthetic and it lets you see when the LCD is switching on and off. Okay, so now opening it up and taking a look on the inside, we have a big 12K resolution build volume of 218 millimeters on the X, 122 millimeters on the Y, and 220 millimeters on the Z. That's pretty big. This thing has a fully automatic build plate leveling system and a return to zero quick release lever um, for the build plate, which I found to be pretty freaking awesome actually. The vat is removed with two thumb screws, one on each side of the vat as you'd expect, and Elu has also included uh, this handy drip tray to keep the machine safe from those pesky little resin drips, which I actually happened to drip down the front already and Mrs. LM had to get in there and clean it up. Thank you. Now, if you're paying attention to the inside, you'll see the new AI camera tucked here into the back corner. Not only is this for time lapses, but this is capable of detecting print failures. And it works really, really well because it saved me from a huge mess. Hey, if you're still watching, we would love to have your like and subscribe. We're a small channel and it helps us out a lot. Back to the AI camera part and how it saved me from a huge mess. When I was removing supports uh, from a print, a small chunk of the support material popped off and it landed in the vat and I had no idea. I sliced up the next model, sent it to the machine from Cheetah Box over the network and I walked out of the studio. A short time later, I heard the alert from the machine. I walked in and the AI camera had actually detected the failed print and stopped it. And that would have been a costly mess because the sharp support piece it actually punctured the FEP and was slowly leaking resin out under the FEP onto the glass above the screen. So I am so glad it stopped the print um, and it was an easy cleanup, uh, no damage to the machine, fortunately. So the AI camera literally worked um, kind of unintentionally. I had no in intention of testing that. So thank you, Elegoo. I already reached out to Elegoo and uh, I politely asked them uh, if they would send over a replacement FEP sheet and I'm sure they will, uh, Elegoo's a fantastic company. Also, let me thank Elegoo for sending us over this machine for free to share with our audience. We really appreciate it, and sorry I broke it so fast. 
On the subject of FEP, most other resin machines that I own always come with an extra FEP sheet, so this one didn't. And if I had a single recommendation for either Elegoo or you, um, that would be that if you're buying one of these machines, go grab an extra FEP sheet for it and have it on hand, uh, because when you end up poking a hole in it, you are dead in the water. And it isn't worth damaging the machine using a temporary fix, like I was tempted to do with some like packaging tape, and then I went, nah, this too nice of a machine to, to mess up. Now, ultimately, we wanna do some comparisons with this machine and some others, like the Creality Mage Pro, the Prusa SL1S, and even the Mars 4 DLP machine that we have here. So I hope to get that FEP here shortly um, so we can continue on with the fun projects. Now, Elegoo has always had a good user experience and an above average build quality, and this machine is exactly uh, what you'd expect. From the unboxing to the general use, uh, cleaning, everything on this particular machine feels premium. Probably one of the best uh, made resin machines that I've ever used. Hold on. Because my first resin experience was with a Prusa SL1S. And for a couple of years, there wasn't a machine in the resin world that could even compete with that user experience or the build quality of that SL1S. But you paid for it. And the SL1S and the CW1 was expensive. But times have changed and the prices have come down because the technology has ultimately been paid for now. In fact, this machine right here, the Saturn IV Ultra, is only $399 which is just insane because I think I paid around $2,000 for my SL1S. And yeah, and I think I even paid more than that because I had the wash and cure combo. Oh, and I also wanted to mention a couple of other things that are kind of important here that I almost forgot. Elegoo boasts speeds up to 150 millimeters per hour on this machine, which is pretty impressive. And I really wish I could have tested that, but after I punctured the FEP, I really couldn't print anymore, and that's where we're at. So that'll be in a future video. Now, also, I wanted to mention that when the machine boots up, it goes through a pretty cool kind of self-test every single time, which is kind of nice, and it gives you this kind of checklist of everything that's correct with the machine, or I suppose if there's a problem, it's gonna tell you. Also, I was provided profiles for Cheetah Box, and that's what I used to slice and print with it, and that was a fantastic experience. So Cheetah Box, adding the printer, setting it up on the wireless network, and just right from the machine, sending prints directly to the Saturn IV Ultra was pretty awesome. And uh, like I said, I think it's a great experience that whether you're advanced or whether you're a novice, pretty nice. If you're interested, I'll have a link on the screen and my affiliate link in the description. Um, but even if you're still sitting on the fence, um, I suggest clicking the link and go over there and checking it out. As for what I wanted to do with this particular machine, we're on a bit of a retro kick here in the studios, and I really wanted to print a Bowser model um, from Super Mario, um, as well as some other fun characters. But I only got as far as printing Bowser before I ruined the FEP sheet. And uh, yeah, feels bad, man. Now this Bowser model is from Printables and I'll have a link uh, in the description like, like we always do. Now I think the Bowser model turned out great. I printed him at a 0.05 millimeter layer height with this Elegoo standard gray resin and um, I wasn't even running this machine fast and this print was only about two hours and 45 minutes or so. I didn't hollow him out at all, so he's pretty solid and was printed in three pieces on the same build plate. Print quality, I think, is just perfect. You're looking at some B-roll and I hope some close-ups, but I, I know it's not a super detailed model, right? So there's obviously some more detailed models that we could have done, but this is what I wanted to do and this is where we ended up. But ultimately, take a look at the smoothness of the model. Um, I think it's incredible. It's really, really, really nice. Um, I'm super impressed um, and I can't wait to print some more detailed models uh, the moment that that FEP shows up. So we'll have to do that in some other content. Now, the next model I wanted to print was this Toad model, also from Printables, um, and I thought that would be fun. But I couldn't because, well, I broke it. But anyway, we've already said that enough. If you have a suggestion for something that you'd like for me to print, um, put that in the comments. Um, I'd like to print whatever it is uh, you want me to see. Now, who is this machine ultimately for? Like all of Elegoo's machines, this resin machine is for everyone. Whether you're a novice or experienced with resin, um, this machine is one of my favorites. If you're new to resin and you're concerned with how difficult or messy it can be, I have a few videos that you can watch that go over my process to keep things clean and tidy. But essentially, 
I treat the outside of the machines as clean and I treat the insides of the machines as dirty or contaminated. It's pretty simple, right? So gloves when touching the inside and the gloves never touch the outside of the machine. And it keeps everything nice and clean and orderly. Also, having a good set of wash and cure machines is also essential. Now it's not required, but it will make resin printing far more enjoyable and I'll have links to those in the description as well. As always, thank you for watching and a huge thank you to all of our YouTube members and patrons. You are what make this content possible. Without you, I wouldn't be here. If you'd like your name included in every one of our videos, we would love to have your support. Click that join button right here or over on the Patreon page. We're working on more behind the scenes and special content just for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.